welcome into the A Mountain Sports Interview Series. I'm your host, Phil Mayer. I'm joined today by a very special guest. We have new Aggies head basketball coach, Jason Hooten. Coach, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me on, Phil. Absolutely. So, um, you know, you spent so long at Sam Houston State, now making the move over here to Las Cruces. How are you settling in? Uh, settling in, you know, um, you know, like anything else. I mean, the longer time goes, the the more you feel comfortable, um, you know, with it being the first time that I've ever lived outside the state of Texas. Um, it's been different for sure. And just trying to get my family acclimated with school, school starting. Now, you know, I have a, an, a ninth grader and a senior. And so just trying to put all that together. Uh, this year, my wife is going to take off from working. So she's really been a huge help with getting them acclimated and settled in at school and in their sports and my son's a tennis player and plays every weekend. So she's been hauling him around to tournaments. And so all of it is really starting to come together. And, you know, at this point in time in the season or uh, the year, you get, you're, you're starting to get ready for the season. And, you know, once that happens and once that starts, everything else in your life kind of gets on hold, um, you know, and put on hold. And so, you know, having a wife that, uh, works so hard and does so much for our family. It makes things a lot easier for sure. Yeah. I mean, I can imagine it's going to be busy during the season, but you know, it's probably also pretty busy this summer building a, a whole new roster uh, yeah. sort of from scratch. Uh, did you have any time to like get through a dinner without taking any phone calls or anything? I haven't. And I've told everybody that normally, you know, in, in a basketball season, if you're if you're blessed and fortunate enough to play into postseason and go a long ways, um, and then as soon as that happens, normally you have recruiting starting up there pretty quick, you know, trying to sign people and now with the portal and everything. Um, so when we went, you know, into the second round of the NIT and then I took the job, um, I just haven't had any downtime. You know, it hasn't stopped because, you know, normally – uh, in the summers is when you have downtime because you get all your guys signed, right? If you need to sign two, three, four, or five. But when you take a new job and you're basically starting over from scratch and you have to sign basically 15, it changes things for sure. So uh, we're in a, you know, we're in a unique situation, you know, this summer. And I just have not had a chance to you know, take a deep breath and and just have any kind of time off or anything like that. So uh, we actually have a football game this weekend. And um, on Monday is Labor Day. And so my wife's best friend is actually flying in this weekend. And she's going to keep an eye on our son. And I think my wife and I, after the football game Saturday night, we're going to drive over out of town somewhere and just get away for a couple of days. But we, we really haven't had a vacation or any downtime at all. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, it's nice. You're going to be able to get at least some time this weekend. Um, but let, let's get into a bit about how you were able to build that roster. So, you know, taking over, starting from scratch, you have to just cast such a wide net. So how do you kind of go about identifying targets when you have so many spots to fill? Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I thought that what we did was not try to get away from what we've always done, and that's to keep a, a, a great balance, um, you know, trying to to keep a mix between high school, junior college and portal guys. Now, we, we all know that because we want to be super competitive right away, that the portal part was probably going to be higher and heavier than it will be in the future. Um but, you know, I, I think we just tried to, you know, just try to identify the guys that have always done really well in our programs and underneath our culture and our umbrella. And we just put our head down and we just worked really, really hard. You know, I think the other thing too, Phil, is you're, you know, as you're trying to build your team, you're also building your staff. And, you know, I had a couple of guys in mind that I knew right away I wanted to go after. And once we got those guys hired, you know, the, the recruiting part, they were going 100 miles an hour at it, you know. And, you know, most of us, we left our families back, you know, where we were we were at. You know, my kids and my wife, they had to finish school there. And so they didn't move out here till the 1st of June. And so that gives you, you know, basically all of April and all of May, you know, where all you're doing is working. You know, I mean, you're sleeping and you're working. That's it. You know, we got to the office 7, 8 in the morning. 
and we were here until 11 or 12 o'clock at night. And actually, we were all living together in the same house, our whole staff. So we would get home at 10 or 11 o'clock and stay up till 12 or 1 watching film together uh, on players. Or we were just sitting around talking about what we were looking at and, you know, what we needed and the balance of our team. And, you know, you just start trying to sign guys again that just fit that that culture. And I think once you really get it going or once you really get it going, then you start to look up and now you've got to start placing people, you know, all right, we got a couple of twos. We got a couple of threes. We got a couple of point guards. And again, just trying to, just trying to maintain balance the whole way through. Yeah, for sure. It must've been just a whirlwind of a two months. Um, you talk about building a staff, how important were sort of relationships with, you know, needing to bring in so many players when, when you're putting together that staff and how much did you lean on that? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I kind of originally thought when we took the job that maybe a few more of the guys from Sam Houston would come with us and that would obviously shorten the number of what we needed, but you know, you have to give a lot of credit to the program that we built there at Sam Houston and the guys that were, you know, they were in that program and they had put a lot of blood, sweat and tears in that program. And, you know, a lot of those guys that stayed were real close to graduation and, and my assistant coach got the job, which he had a lot to do with recruiting some of those kids as well. So, you know, Casey was the only one that actually wanted to come and, uh, you know, it was great to have him, a, a person who's played for me and, and been in our program for a year. And no, now he's kind of that springboard for these new guys, you know, to, to help them with drills and to help them with expectations and accountability and things of that nature. But the other people were just always relationship you know, based. I mean, when you're recruiting, that's most of the time what it's all about. It's about relationships and, you know, how many of these people that we already knew and the coaches and they're, you know, and then all of a sudden you get one guy and it led to another guy because he knew him. And so, you know, we, I think we've got like four guys from Georgia and all of those guys knew each other, you know, uh, coach September had a great relationship with one and it just kind of, kind of became a domino effect. And uh, those guys had all played with each other or against each other growing up. So I don't think recruiting has changed. I know the portal's a whole different story now, but I just think that everything is still based off of relationships. Yeah, definitely. Um, and when you are trying to sell a kid on coming here, you know, it's such a unique situation. Um, what do you sort of look for in like a kid that can thrive, thrive here? Well, first and foremost, I think if you can look at my background here on this Zoom, uh, we got a beautiful place and, uh, you know, that that's our campus. And then I think in the very, very backdrop there, you can see how beautiful those mountains are. And, you know, you wake up every day, um, you know, I, that's basically my view from my office. And so we have a great, great place to, to sell. Um, you know, I think very important, too, is the weather. Uh, you know, here it's it's uh, pretty much sunny and and beautiful almost year round, um, you know, at least 11 months of the year, 10 months of the year. And so, you know, you just you, you're talking about a beautiful place and, a you know, beautiful weather. And then I think tradition. I mean, basketball has always been super important here. And, you know, from the days of, you know, Coach Henson and the final four run in 1970. And, you know, just there's just been a lot of tradition. You know, Coach McCarthy had great teams here and Chris Jans. And, you know, I mean, a lot of coaches did a lot of really special things. And I, I think that that tradition and, you know, you walk around town, you know, this morning I go get a smoothie and I'm standing in line and three people come up and say, Coach, good luck this season. Well, you know, it just, that doesn't happen everywhere. And, you know, and the great thing about it, Phil, is that you can actually go to those places and people just kind of let you be who you are and, and let you kind of live your life, but yet they still want to come up and they still want to give you respect and they still want to, you know, uh, give love to your program and to our university. And, you know, this community uh, I can already tell, you know, our football game Saturday night, I bet there was over 20,000 people there. And, you know, just this community and the way they rally right behind this university, it just, I think it speaks volumes for, you know, why a student athlete would want to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
you know, to be able to sell a kid on, on a school, a program of this size, that's able to make the tournament as much as they can must be huge. Um, another thing I wanted to ask about was having this strong NIL base with a mountain sports. Um, how much of a factor is that in recruiting and how helpful has that been? Well, it's, it, it's probably the most important thing right now. I mean, you know, I always tell people there's a lot of different levels of the game, but you have to get in the game in order to try to reach levels. And right now we are, you know, we are squarely, we are squarely in the game, you know, and, you know, I mean, I have so many friends that are division one coaches on the the mid to low major levels. And just to listen to them talk about not having some one or something like a mountain sports it's prevalent all the way across the board. Um, you know, hey, how did y'all get that started? Hey, how do y'all do this? Hey, how do y'all do that? Um, you know, Dr. Grindstaff, Paul Grindstaff has been an amazing advocate for us. And just, you know, us being, again, the, the, you know, the greatest thing about it is, is that as a staff uh, and as a program, we do nothing. Like all we do is recruit the young man and a mountain sports is in charge and takes care of everything else. And so that's, that's, that means a lot. It means a lot to me personally, but I know it means a lot to our program. And like anything else, we want to continue to build, you know, we want to continue to put ourselves uh, in that mix with some of the bigger schools and, you know, quote unquote, bigger schools. And we want to be a player uh, in, in, in a lot of those different avenues. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so when talking about setting a culture, you know, with all the, all these new kids coming in, is, is it sort of helpful in a way to have that completely fresh slate where there's no holdovers, no trying to like marry your culture with the previous culture? You really just get to, you know, start from ground, ground one, ground zero. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, well, obviously in the situation that we were in here, uh, it was very, very important. We felt to start over and start over in a sense that we're just bringing in all of our new players and all of our new philosophies and all of our new culture, our new staff, but not starting over in a sense that we expect to not win this year. And, and also not starting over in a sense that we don't want to change the tradition here. Uh, as you said, I mean, to be able to, you know, I think we've won like six out of the last nine championships in the conference that we've been in and also been to the NCAA tournament, like three out of the last four years. So, you know, to me, those things are still important. That that's a, you know, I think that's a label uh, that's a good label for us. And and to me, it was just all about really picking up everything that we kind of did culture wise at Sam Houston, and then just bringing it over here and just dropping it in. And you know, and just to try to continue the winning ways that have always been expected at New Mexico State is is our biggest goal. And we feel like, you know, feel moving forward that we've kind of gotten that restart of the culture. You know, we, the, our guys are already in practice uh, and they're going to class daily. And, you know, we started our study hall Sunday night and, you know, just all of those trademarks, all of those benchmarks, the things that we've always done in our programs, you know, we, we've gotten that going here. And, you know, we've had a couple of functions that our, our student athletes have already gone to. And, you know, the compliments that we're getting from the community, you know, uh, from the six man club, uh, you know, athletic department, people are just complimented about how nice our kids are and, and how respectful they are and how accountable and appreciative and all of those things that are important to us. That means a lot to me. I think that tells me that we're going in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, very important stuff. Um, so starting the season, you guys are starting off at Kentucky. I know, I know at Sam Houston State, you you took your teams on the road a couple times in some competitive games. Um, how does a game like that sort of like set the tone for the season? Well, Phil, I thought it was really important that we kind of uh started the year off maybe with some good um some some good publicity. You know, I think going to a place like Kentucky. You know, obviously there'll be 26,000 people there sold out. Uh, you know, that game will be uh, the highlights of that game, good or bad, will be on ESPN. Uh, you know, I just I just kind of thought that that would be good for us, you know, for uh, for us to be seen in a really positive light after what happened last year and just to get off on a good foot. And, you know, I mean, we, we've always been 
uh, we've we've never ran away from tough games or challenges or anything like that. And, you know, and that won't change. We're always going to play a very competitive and a very tough schedule. Uh, I think it's important. You know, you want to be good when league comes around in January. And, you know, I think that's really the most important thing. Of course, we want to win uh, every game we play and we want to have a great record leading up into conference. But I think this year, maybe more than any year I've ever coached, it's going to be extremely important that we build and that we get better daily, whether it be practice, study hall, you know, weight, weight room. It doesn't matter. We've just got to try to take every day one at a time. And we've got to try to, we've just got to try to accomplish something really good every day and get better. And, um, you know, and our schedule is going to be tough. I, I mean, it, it's uh, not quite done. I need one more game and just kind of going back and forth with a few people right now to try to finish this thing up. But you know, I, I just I think like always, we're going to play a, a tough, competitive non-conference schedule in order to get us ready for Conference USA. Absolutely. Uh, great stuff there. We're going to finish it off with some rapid fire questions so people get to know you a little bit better. Uh, okay. What's one favorite spot around Las Cruces that you've you found yourself eating at a lot? Uh, that's a tough question, Phil. I think the reason that one will be hard to ans answer is just because there are so many good places here. And I'm a, I'm kind of a, you know, I like to try everything and I, I've, I haven't gotten to every place yet, but I'll continue to, to really work hard. But my, my go-to, my daily lunch go-to is Jimmy John's. Uh, it's just right across the street from campus. You know, it's easy to get a little, and they make a real small sandwich. So I'm not a big lunch guy and I'll just run over and grab a quick sandwich. Uh, most afternoons, you know, I'll, I'll probably use a Jimmy John's for lunch. Yeah, definitely uh, nice and fast for a busy guy like you is big time. Um, what's one music artist you've been playing a lot recently? Oh, gosh, that's a tough one, too. Um, so I'm a. Uh, man, music is an interesting thing for me. Uh, so I'm a real big R&B guy. And but my wife, uh, my wife and my son listen to country music, so. It just depends on who's driving and what car we're in. Uh, when we're in my car or I'm driving, we're usually listening to satellite radio. Um, and then if we're if I'm in her car and he's in control of the radio, he's got a playlist of about a million things. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't have any one particular. I usually listen to satellite radio. So, you know, they've got a, a rotating thing there and uh you know, probably my favorite radio station on that on Sirius is probably uh, Channel Three Thirty. It's called the Silk. Uh, it's a little bit of some old R and B eighties. That's a little bit more of my my genre and my time period. You know, uh, when I was in high school and college. Uh, so I'm kind of dating myself now. So, <laughs> sorry, the old stuff is always better anyway. Love that's to absolutely right. That's exactly <laughs> right. All right, what's um in the Hooten household, what's one movie or TV show that you guys like that might be playing one day? Okay, so that's the next thing that I'm a little bit different person on. So I'm not a, I usually only watch one thing on TV and that is usually the Texas Rangers, which is not a lot of fun to watch right now. Uh, we're in a, a really, bullpen. really, we're in a bad skid and we've got the worst bullpen in the history of baseball. So <laughs> um my kids and my wife watch a lot of TV. Uh, Phil, I will step in sometimes, and if they have a movie on, I'll sit down and watch the movie with them. But I'm not a, uh, I don't, I don't uh, do the Netflix and follow the show thing and do all of that. I, I'm, I'm either watching the Rangers or usually I'm watching film uh, or. I'm just hanging out and visiting with my family. Other than that, I'm not, I'm not a binge watcher or any of that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm a, I'm a pretty boring guy. Unfortunately, I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm a pretty boring guy. All right. Last one here. You got a favorite Ranger of all time. Favorite Ranger of all time. Wow. You know, I never think about that. Uh, Man, how can you not like uh, Michael Young? Juan Gonzalez, who you got? I would have to guess my two favorite Rangers of all time, probably either Michael Young or Pudge. Okay. Those Sounds are both good. kind of my kind of guy. Like, 
everyday guys, tough, you know, Michael Young, you know, at one point in time, it played so many games in a row or, you know, I don't know, that, that's kind of the guys or Pudge, you know, I mean, I think Pudge was probably, in my opinion, Pudge, it's probably between Pudge and Johnny Bench for the best catchers of all time, in my opinion. So, um, anyway, yeah, I don't know. Those are real good questions, though. Real all right. Questions. Appreciate it. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. That's all we've got today. If you're not already doing it, please follow us on Twitter at AMTN Sports. Check out our website, AggieNIL.com, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for alerts and more interviews just like this one.